I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. Jesus name we pray. Amen. We're coming to Ezekiel chapter 36. And I'm reading from verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 36. We're reading from verse 11. And I will multiply upon your man and beast. And they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estate. I will do better. I will do better. I will do better unto you than at your beginnings, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Then we have the promise of the Lord, and there we have a prophecy of what God says He wants to do, is going to do. He has the power to fulfill His promise. He has the power to do whatever He wants to do. But then there is something that leads to that. There is something that leads to the blessings of God in your life, in my life, in our lives as a church corporately together. Look at verse 25. It says in verse 25, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. He cannot fully bless us. He cannot richly bless us in the state of dirt, of defilement, of sinning, of iniquity. And therefore it says, Yes, I'm going to do better things unto you. And I'm going to multiply you. And I'm going to fulfill all the good desires of your heart. But then it says, I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And ye shall be clean. And from all your filthiness and all your idols will I cleanse you. The salvation. Salvation comes with conversion. Conversion comes with cleansing. It comes with washing. That all the sins of the past, not just of last year, of your whole life. If you have not been born again, if you profess to be born again, but you are not living a righteous life, a clean life, a converted life, a transformed life, it says this is the first thing I'm going to do for you in preparation for the better things I want to fulfill in your life. It says he cleanses. It says he washes. It says he beautifies the life and makes the life clean and righteous and holy. And then he goes to number two in verse 26. A, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. There are preachers and there are proclaimers of the gospel that think that salvation is all we need. They say, they say once you are born again, that's all. Once you are saved, that's all. And when you talk about another experience, the work of grace, a second work of grace in your heart and your life. They say, what's that? They say, we got everything in verse 25. We got everything in salvation. We got everything in that initial experience of being born again. Why did God then promise another thing? Because he said in verse 25, I'm going to sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. That is done in verse 25. And there is no doubt about it. That's genuine salvation. That's total forgiveness. That's total conversion. And he tells us, I will cleanse you myself. I'm going to put that clean water upon you, and you will be clean. No doubt about that. Conversion. But then he said, it's not all through yet. It's not all done yet. There is another thing. That's sanctification. That's the holiness of heart. And that's the purity of heart. He said, I'm going to do that to a new heart also. The word also means, I've done that. That's settled. I've saved you. That's settled. You are converted. That's settled. You have repented and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and your life is new. That's settled. But it says, also, don't go yet. Don't go yet. Come back for this. In your heart also, 
will I give you? And a new spirit will I put within you? And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. Verse 25, salvation. Verse 26, sanctification. It says, I'm not through with you yet. Then it comes to verse 27, and I will put my spirit within you. Didn't Jesus say, after the people were saved, after he said, rejoice because your names are written in heaven, born again. After he prayed for them, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Didn't he say, after that sanctification, wait and tarry in Jerusalem, for ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That's why verse 25, salvation. Verse 26, sanctification. Verse 27, the immersion in the Holy Ghost. The indwelling of the Holy Ghost. The baptism in the Holy Ghost. I will put my spirit within you. And ye shall and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. It says, I give you those three Christian experiences. And then you are ready to fulfill the totality, the entirety of all my will. And then it says, even though I give the promise, it's not automatic. You still must pray. Look at verse 37. Thus says the Lord God. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will yet for this be inquired of. You will seek my face. You will pray unto me. And you will make your request before me. And then I will give you what I promise. And I will increase them like what men like a flock. We're coming to Matthew chapter Six Matthew chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm reading that again. But seek ye first, seek ye first. Let, the, let this be number one in your heart. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and is righteousness and then it says after that all these things shall be added unto you this year is a year of addition yeah. and a year of multiplication and the blessings of god will be enriching your life this year in jesus name particularly i'm looking at this verse 33 and i tell you the message today rediscovering the forgotten past to blessing rediscovering the forgotten past to bless it. Many people pray, especially at the end of an old year and beginning of a new year. Lord, bless me. Lord, bless me. Lord, bless me. And then we list a lot of things that I want the Lord to do. And we have forgotten the past to bless it. And yet Jesus Christ reveals to us in one single sentence, as it is revealed in the totality of Scripture, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, how we get into the blessings of the Lord, the forgotten past to blessing. We we'll want to rediscover that. What's that? Look at it in verse 33 again. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, prioritizing the reign of the most high king. Prioritizing. Make it a priority. Seek ye first. Prioritizing the reign of the most high king. Higher than the earth. Higher than all the people of the earth. Higher than angels. Higher than all men. Higher than everything you can think about. The most high king. The most high God. You prioritize the reign of that king. Point number one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Prioritize the reign of the most high king. Number two. Pursuing the righteousness of his heavenly kingdom. Pursuing the righteousness of of his heavenly kingdom that you find in verse 30 seek ye first and then 
his righteousness. The righteousness of God. The righteousness of his kingdom. Seek that righteousness. Number three, possessing the riches of his holy kingdom. Possessing the riches of his holy kingdom. What's that? Look at verse 33 again. And all these things shall be added unto you. The things to be added, the riches, the resources, material things, physical things, natural things, spiritual things to you, everything you desire, all that will be added once, number one, you pursue his reign. Number two, you, number one, you prioritize his reign. Number two, you pursue his righteousness. And then number three, you'll possess the riches. Let's come to number one. Prioritizing the reign of the most high king. Prioritizing the reign of the most high king. We're coming to Matthew chapter 6, the first part of verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Remember, we're talking about the forgotten path to blessing. Other people have realized this before, but many people don't realize this today. That if we're going to have all those things our hearts desire, there is one way to do that. After see, you don't even think about those things. You want this, you want this, you want that, and you desire this, and you want to grab this, you want to have that. After see, those things are not even on your mind. And say, number one, the priority, seek ye first. The kingdom of God. As if all those other things do not matter. And they do not count to you. We're looking at Second Corinthians, 2 Chronicles chapter 1. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, we're reading it from verse 7. In verse 7 it says, In that night did God appear to Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee, what if you were? The person that God said, ask what I will give you. If you do not know the path to blessing, if you think that, oh, I need this, I need this, I need that, you begin to bring a list before the Lord and see, and Solomon said unto God, thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father and hast made me to reign in his stead, instead of him, in place of him, after him. Now, O oh Lord God, let thy promise unto David, my father, be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth. A multitude give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people. For who can judge? For who can lead, for who can direct, for who can teach, for who can portray, for who can be before these people, this great, this thy people that is so great. And God said to Solomon, because, underline that word in your Bible, because, mark that your Bible, because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches. Look at that. You have not asked riches, which the ordinary person will ask for, which the ordinary king will ask for, which the ordinary politician will ask for, which the ordinary professional man will ask for, which the ordinary church goer will ask for, which the ordinary Pentecostal Christian will ask for, which the which the ordinary person that goes to night vigil, which they will ask for. It says, Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth or not, not lie, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast thou asked for long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for, thy, for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people. You put my people, my kingdom first. You keep my glory first, and you keep my joy first. It says, over whom I have made thee king, wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches which you didn't ask for, and wealth which you didn't ask for, and honor which you didn't ask for, that none that has none of the kings, such as none of the kings have had that have been 
before thee, neither shall there be any after thee, after up like delight. You will see what the Lord is saying here. He says, because you are asking for my glory, and you are asking to fulfill the portion I've given you, that you reign over my people in a proper way, in a perfect way, in a good way, that will satisfy me, because you put me forth, all these other things I will give you. You prioritize the kingdom of God, and the glory of God, and the righteousness of God. You are to see marriage. Well, God will do that, but that's not the important thing now. Job, God will do that. That's not the important thing now. Success, that's not the important thing now. The kingdom of God. You are born again. Because except a man be born again, he cannot see, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You see, this is the number one thing. My relationship with God. This is the number one thing. My submission to God. This is the number one thing. My life in Christ. And you put that first. And let's look at those who do not do that and they feel, you know, this is what I want. Riches, that's what I'm going to put forth. That's what I'm going to have. If I don't have that, I can't be talking about salvation. Paul being born again and being cleansed when I'm hungry, when I need food, when I need clothing, when I need this or that. How can you be seeking of salvation? How can you be seeking of the kingdom of God? How can you be seeking of putting the glory of God first? the righteousness of God first and the beauty of holiness how can you be thinking of putting that first when here I don't have this I don't have this the foolishness of a man and the foolishness of a woman that forgets God and things is going to concentrate on personal things and physical things before the glory of God but if you're wise it's telling you to put God first and telling you that what's important is who you are with God. And then you say, God is kingdom, is glory, is power, and is requirement. That's what I'm going to put forth. And it's when you do that in your life, all the other things will follow. Look at Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 15. Luke chapter 12. We're reading from verse 15. It says in verse 15, and it said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Take heed and beware. I want this. You've got it. I'm not satisfied. I want this again. You are not satisfied. I want this again. Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, he is talking about a foolish man now, a man that will not put God first. A man that will not prioritize the kingdom of God. A man that will not make God his desire. And God his priority. And heaven is priority. And the glory of God is priority. A man that will not think of the kingdom of God first. A man that will say clothing are first. Education is first. Profession is first. Work is forced. This other one is forced. And then salvation will come after. And then God will come after. And then the glory of God will come after. What a foolish man, what a foolish woman that will be. And he spake a parable in verse 16 unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he sought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Have you noticed that, you know, I, my, I, my, my work, my life, my fruits, my goods, my barns. My profession, everything, my mind, what a self-centered man. And then he says, and I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be? which thou hast provided. And you understand how sins will not follow you to heaven. 
You realize certificates will not follow you to heaven. You realize riches, bank account, will not follow you to heaven. The only thing that will follow you to heaven, that salvation experience, that new birth experience. You understand that all those things you amass and all those things you take glory in, all those things, I want this, I want this, I want that, will not follow you to heaven. But holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. That righteousness, that purity of heart that will help you to save the Lord. This man did not put that false. All he wanted is my this, my that, my property, my position, and all that. And God said, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? He says, so is he. This general now, this talking about you. So is he. It's talking about everyone. This so you see that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. No salvation. It's not rich towards God. There's no sanctification. It's not rich towards God. There is no priority of putting the kingdom of God first. And so is everyone that is uh, so foolish and is so only thinking about material things and about property, about physical, touchable, tangible things. We're looking at Psalm 119. Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 36. Prioritizing the reign of the great high king. Prioritizing. Push it as priority. That the number one thing in your life, as you wake up in the morning, number one thing in your life, as you retire in the evening, is that you want to check up, you want to take inventory. How is it between your soul and the Almighty God? In Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 36, it says, Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. Incline my heart, let me lean towards thy testimony. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. And that's the kind of prayer to pray. And let's look at another person that shall show some wisdom in uh, making the kingdom of God and the service of God and the salvation of the Lord and the worship of the Lord, the priority and not the things of this world and then all the things that this person did not even ask for, the Lord gave. Look at Ruth chapter 1. In Ruth chapter 1, we're reading from verse, nine, from verse 15. Rediscovering the forgotten path to blessing. And it thinks your soul may be discerning. You say, this year, if I could have this, if I could have this and that, can we push that aside for some time and prioritize the kingdom of God and make sure that beyond everything, above everything, besides everything, you have their spiritual experience and then your soul is attached unto God. Your soul is dedicated unto the Lord. You say, number one, number one, number one thing in my life, I'm going to serve God this year. I'm going to give myself to God this year. I'm going to be totally sold out to God this year. I'm going to be totally consecrated, committed, submissive, surrendered unto the Lord this year. That will be the number one thing in my life. And then I'm going to allow God to do the rest and arch unto me the rest, whatever he wants to do. Ruth chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 15. Ruth chapter 1 verse 15. And she said, it's now me now talking to uh, Ruth. And uh, behold, a sister-in-law is come back unto her people and unto her God. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Uh, the uh, mother-in-law, that's Naomi, had been talking about, you know, if you follow me, I cannot promise you husband. If you follow me, I cannot promise you much accommodation. If you follow me, I cannot promise you much of the things of this life. And when Opa considered that and said, uh -uh, what does the future hold? If we follow this uh, mother-in-law, so she went back and Naomi said unto Ruth, now your sister-in-law has come back. Because she was putting the things of the world first, money first, accommodation first, profession first, my husband first, having children first. When I have all that, then I will come and serve the Lord. But then she went back because there's nobody that could promise her that. Look at verse 16, and Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, 
and where thou lodgest, I don't know what the place looks like, beautiful or or rapture concealed, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. Look at this. Thy God, my God. Thy God, my God. She put God first. That's what Jesus said. Even before Jesus came to this world, Ruth understood the pathway to blessing. She understood that if you're going to get the richest of blessings from the Lord, the greatest of blessings from the Lord, the highest of blessings from the Lord, you put God for thy God, my God, where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me. And more also, if aught but death part thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. But look at this. The thing she didn't ask her, and she didn't say, well, when I get there, I'll use whatever method. Us, I must have husband. I'm following you, but I must have husband. I'm following you, I must have good housing. I'm following you, I must have health care, good health care. I'm following you, but I must have this and that. You don't have to have, you don't have to emphasize all that. See, keep forced. The kingdom of God. Make sure you are born again. Make sure you are saved. Make sure you are sanctified. Make sure should the rapture happen any moment. Before we get there, after we get there, make sure you are rapturable. Make sure the righteousness of the kingdom is in your heart. The life of the king is reflected and reproduced in your life. Make sure that that righteousness and that holiness without which no man shall save the Lord, make sure that that is in place. All these other things, leave God, leave that with God. God is a faithful God. He blesses the people that serve him and the people that look up to him to be blessed. He blesses them. Look at Ruth chapter 4. In Ruth chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Well, what a upper thought may not happen, it happened. The blessing upper went for, before upper got anything, Ruth had got a So This year, if you do the right thing with God, you'll get more than you are praying for. And you'll get more than your heart wishes in Jesus' name. If you rediscover this forgotten path to the blessing of God, that just think about God and just say, God, you are number one in my life this year. If I need to make a choice, either come to church or go for a business, uh, you know, trip, I'll come to church. If I had to make a choice, either come to the Bible study or go to watch, uh, you know, something somewhere. No, I will come to the Bible study. I'm going to make God force in everything and all the bribes and all the corruption, everything the other people are, and they say, if you don't do this, you cannot make it in this country. And you say, even if I don't have that, number one in my life, who is number one in your life? God will be number one. And then you'll find what he did for the, for the patriarchs of old. And what he did for the prophets and the people of old, he will do for you in Jesus' name. In Ruth chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Now, these are the generations of Pharaohs. And Pharaoh begat Esron, and you know, it goes on. And uh, why don't I, you know, back up a little bit and read from verse 13 so you understand where it comes in here? And so Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when she went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. How about her? Opa, Opa has gone without any record. You will not go without any record. You know, the people, I'm running for this, I'm running for this, will forget you. Heaven will forget you. God will forget you. And you will just pass through life without any record. But the people who say, I've heard what Jesus said. And I'm going to follow after what Jesus Christ has said. Seeking for us the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I'm going to do exactly that. You'll be in remembrance forever in Jesus' name. And the women in verse 14, and the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which has not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. You see, those who make the right choice, they be, they'll be famous on earth and famous in heaven. And then it goes on to say, and he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thine old age for thy daughter-in-law. 
for a daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, and which is better to thee than seven sons, has born him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom, and became nurse unto it. And the women, and the women, and her neighbors, uh, they came and they gave each a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse and the father of David. And then you trace that to the Lord Jesus Christ. A good portion came to her. A good portion will come to you. Because this woman, because she chose God first and said, because God is first in my life, then the rest followed. The rest will follow in your life. Look at Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 23. And we're reading from verse 26. You see what the Lord is saying? Make good for us this year. If you are not born again, get born again quick. Turn away from your sin. And then receive the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. If you are born again, but you know you are still carrying some guilt, you're studying some things, and then every time you see that you say, even though I say I'm born again, it looks like I'm a thief, I'm a robber. Make confession, make your restitution. And it is that that will clear you up and your conscience will become clear before the Lord. Repentance, restitution, reconciliation, righteousness. And then you are walking your way without any guilt and without any oppressing thing in your heart. Give your heart totally to the Lord. And let there be no reservation. Just say, praise the Lord. I'm serving the Lord. Because, you know, without repentance, you cannot get saved. And then without restitution... That salvation will be shaky. Will not be very sure. The fellow that is still using all the all the stolen property, all the stolen materials, and is still building the house or the money he stole from the office or from the church. You know, your your, your salvation will not be real. And if Christ comes, of course, you're not going to go. With all the money you stole in the church, all the money you stole also in your office, building out, and the house you will not take away. And then you will be grounded because of that stolen thing. Restore everything so that you can be free. And you say, praise the Lord, I am saved. Praise the Lord, my life is new. And your life will be new this year in Jesus' name. Then will the promise of the Lord be real in your life. I will do better things unto you than your former time, than your beginning. Proverbs chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 26. It says, my son... Give me thine heart, the whole of your heart. The whole of your heart. That's what he requires. That's what he demands. And if you're a real child of God, that's what you really want to do, my son. Give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. We're looking at uh, uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 29. The choice you make, the decision you make, and the path shall follow, and the life you live. In um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5 and verse 29. Then Peter and the rest and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to be God rather than men. Think about that. Your extended family will put some pressure on you. Come take this uh, chieftain's title. Come take this, come take that. God forbids me to do that. They will say the same way, your family. If you don't do this, we are going to disown you. We ought to obey God rather than men. Maybe there are some religious people too. Maybe you are connected with them one way or the other. And they say, do this or do that. And then you see it's against the word of God. And you decide to put God first this year. Every moment of your life, in every decision you take, anywhere you go, you say, I'm sorry, I'm going to obey God. We ought to obey God rather than men. Maybe some backsliding member of the church. Our church here, he is backsliding, and then he does a lot of things, and he allows himself to compromise here and compromise there. And then they say, you will do this. I'm sorry, I can't do that anymore now. This year, I dedicated my heart, my spirit, my soul, my mind 
mind, my action, my behavior, my character. I've dedicated everything to the Lord. Hey, I am your so-and-so. I am your leader. I brought you to the church. Hey, don't tell me story. We ought to obey God, brother. That means it may be a wife that is saying, well, I know what, uh, you know, the, what the teachers and all that, but you know, I just like this. I just like that. Uh, but you like that contrary to the word of God. This year, I've dedicated my life, my all, everything. I've laid it on the altar. That's what it means to be really saved. That's what it means to be really sanctified. We ought to obey God rather than men. It may be your husband that comes and he says, you know what? If you want me to have my mind on you and my eyes on you, I'd like to, to you to put on this and put on that. But look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Don't talk about that. I say this is what I want. And then you You'll be able to say that you put God first and you put the demand of God and the commandment of God and the standard of the word of God. You put that first in your life. You say, I love you, my husband, but I would rather obey God more than men. It means that this year, God will be above gifts in your life. Whatever gift anybody wants to give, whatever gifts, you know, even spiritual gifts, you say, yes, all that is good. God, number one, heaven above the earth. Whatever earth may promise you, and whatever the people on earth may promise you this year, heaven will be above the earth. The spiritual above the material things. You know, there may be, you know, your friends and your colleagues, everybody, they are running after these material things. You see them, and they are watching you because you fold your hand, you are looking at them, they say, hey, come on, won't you run? The rat race, we're all running. Don't you have this, don't you want this? You say, this year, God is number one in my life. What if you don't have this? You wait and see. I'm going to have those things that you're running after. I'm going to have them before you. Somebody gives me an amen there. Because while you're standing here, seeking only the glory of God, and the people are running, they want the material things of the world, and they abandon God before they get anything, whatever, you have got your own. Because he says, if you put in force, if you seek the kingdom of God first, and his righteousness is going to arch unto you, all these other things, he will do that in Jesus' name. Have you noticed how people care for their body? They pass in the morning, and then they put on good clothes, they go to work, they earn money, they go to school, they have certificates, or whatever they do. Have you noticed that everything is for the body? And most people that do that for their body, they neglect their soul, they neglect their spirit. There is no quiet time in the morning. There's no devotion in the morning. There's no Bible reading in the morning. There's no prayer in the morning. And there is no verse to take with them. Throughout this day, I'll pinch my life. I will make my life to rest on this verse so that I will know God first all through the day. The Bible first all through the day. The doctrines of the Bible first all through the day. The teaching of the word of God first all through the day. My commitment to the Lord all through the day. My surrender unto the Lord all through the day. Whatever challenge comes to me, whatever decision I have to take, I'm going to make pivot my life on this verse of scripture. There's no time for that. The only thing of their body, the only thing of food and remains and whatever and the shelter and there is nothing that talks about how wise they are in seeking the face of the Lord. But for you this year, you think of your spirit and your soul as you are taking care of your body. So that you say, my spirit is false. You know, when you die, that body will go to the grave. And it is your spirit, your soul, that will go to God. And that spirit is not being taken care of. It's not being cleansed. It's not being fed. It's not being taken care of. That's not wise. This year, spiritual things will be number one above material, physical things in Jesus' name. If you are there, I'm waiting for it to find amen. amen. Point number two, pursuing the righteousness of the heavenly kingdom. We're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at verse 33. And you'll see what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. It says, number one, settle your priority. Number two, settle your pursuit. Verse 33, but seek ye first 
the kingdom of God. That's what we'll be talking about, the priority, the number one sin in your life that Jesus Christ said, this is first. Now number two, and his righteousness. And his righteousness. It says, this is what you seek. You have come into the kingdom, you are born again. Because I told you, the word of God tells us, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now you are born again, you have entered into the kingdom. And you put God first in your life. What's the next thing? What do you see? So that blessings will be added unto you. That is the pursuit of righteousness and his righteousness, pursuing the righteousness of his heavenly kingdom. We're looking at Zephaniah. Zephaniah. I hope you'll find that. Zephaniah. Look for it. I'll read it to you if you've not found it. In Zephaniah chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3. It says, Seek ye the Lord, all ye, the, all ye meek of the earth which have wrought his judgment, and seek righteousness. Seek righteousness. Seek righteousness. And seek meekness. It may be ye shall, ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger, of the Lord's judgment. It says, seek righteousness. You know, if you are reading many of these uh, books uh, that they put out there, in their bookshops, on the street corners, or whenever we go for program, all those people put all the books there. Those people are just marketing, or, you know, whatever. They do not know what's contained inside those books. And you see the beautiful cover, and therefore you buy. They tell you in all those books, they say, you don't need to try to be righteous. You're born again. And the righteousness of Christ is already splashed on you imputed unto you it's given unto you whatever you do whatever you don't do whether you are personally righteous or not they say judicially god has given it to you and he counts you as righteous you know what the word of god says yes because you have been a sinner and because you didn't know the lord at all when you come to the lord the only record and the only reckoning that can be given to you is the righteousness of Christ imputed unto you. But now there's another word, the righteousness will be imparted unto you. That's what he's saying here. There is practical righteousness. There is active righteousness. There is personal righteousness. There is behavioral righteousness. There is active righteousness in your life. It says seek to be righteous. And Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then he says, and it's righteousness. He didn't say, don't worry about righteousness. I've given that to you already. I've imputed that to you already. At your point of being saved, at salvation, you are as righteous as you will ever be. Jesus didn't say that. He said, priority, the kingdom of God. Pursuit, righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And in that passage I read to you now, it says, what you seek is righteousness. Uh, look at this uh, wonderful, interesting verse in Jeremiah chapter 45. Jeremiah chapter 45, and I'm reading from verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 45, verse 5. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. You see that there are many people, they do not understand the path to the blessings of God. And they say, what do I want to be? I want to be a star shining up there. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. Anytime you, maybe you are reading a particular whatever, material, whatever, um, article, you say, that's what I want to be. How about the will of God? I say, this is what I want to be. How about what did God create you for? And what did he feed you for? That man is a doctor. If everybody in the world was a doctor, 
somewhere would engineer be? If everybody was an engineer in the world, where will the doctor be? If everybody was engineer or doctor, where will the tailors be? If everybody was a tailor, where will the cook be? He has created every one of us to balance up all the needs of humanity in the world. And so you cannot just say, I see that one, I'm going to be like that. I see that one, I'm going to be like that. It says, seek ye force, the kingdom of God. He knows what he created you for coming to the kingdom. You get born again and get sanctified and surrender your soul, your spirit, your personality. Surrender everything to the Lord and then the Lord will make you what he has created you for. Somebody is saying amen over there. Amen. And what the Lord has planned for you from all eternity because known unto him and all his works before the foundation of the earth. And what he has created you for, he will give to you. You know, some people come to the church and as they look at the church, they say, okay, I choose that, I choose that. And then if you say, the Lord is leading the pastor to say, go and do this. Uh, pastor, no, it's covenant month. I have covenant with God. I have already chosen what I will be. Are you the one to choose what you will be? Or God will choose for you what he wants you to be? Everybody, what do you want to be? This one wants to be an apostle. The other one there wants to be an apostle. The other one, I am going to be an apostle. And the young people of this generation, what do you want to be? Apostle. Uh -huh. Where are the evangelists? And where are the pastors? Where are the teachers? I don't know, but we are all going to be apostles. And then, who are you going to have apostolic ministry when everybody is an apostle? Seek, seekest thou great things for thyself. Look at that verse 5. Seek them not. And he says, For behold, I will bring evil upon all flesh. Says the Lord, but thy life will I give unto thee. He says, If you will listen to me, and you will not seek great things for yourself, for yourself, for yourself. He says, I'm going to bless you beyond your expectation. He will do it in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. I'm reading here from verses 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 51. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Hearken to me, ye that follow after, what's the next word there? Righteousness. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. In all those books and all those evangelical preachers, you don't need righteousness. Christ has made you righteous. You don't need to follow after righteousness. Leave all that righteousness alone and just understand everybody is righteous enough. Uh -uh. The Bible says, Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are healed, and to the and to the hole out of the pit whence ye are deep. Look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah, and that bear you, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. He said, He's going to show you the pattern how Abraham sought after God, priority that's God. Pursuit, that's righteousness. And I called him alone. He didn't copy other people. He didn't go after other people. And he just did what I wanted him to do. And I called him and I blessed him. And if you will follow that pattern of life of Abraham, he's going to bless you this year. And the blessings are going to multiply beyond your wildest dream in Jesus' name. Let me show you the example of this uh, one that sought after righteousness, that followed after righteousness, and God said, I called him and I blessed him. Look at Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13, I'm reading here from verse 5. Do you realize that this is the first book of the Bible? Before all the other uh, pieces of revelation came, this is the very first. And look at the attitude of this patriarch of Abraham. And the Lord is saying, look unto that Abraham. Because that's the one that begat you, talking to the Israelites. And he's saying, I called him, and I blessed him. And if you will do the same, your priority shall be God. If you are going to be the same, your pursuit will be righteousness. Look at this. In Genesis chapter 13 and verse 5. It says in verse 5, And Lot also, which went with Abraham, at floods and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them. 
and that they might dwell together for their sustenance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife, misunderstanding, and conflict between the headmen of Abraham's culture and the headmen of Lord's culture. And the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt then in the land. And Abraham said unto the Lord, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my headmen and thy headmen, for we are we be brethren. Have you noticed that? Anything you're seeking that you, know, you have to strive before you get it, that's not the will of God. That's not the way to our blessing. Anything you want, and you want it so much, you must strive with Abraham. You must strive with your neighbor. You must strive with a member of the church. You must strive with your husband. You must strive with your wife. You must strive with somebody before you can have them. That's not the will of God. It means that your salvation is not steady. Your salvation is not real. You might just be like Lord that will choose something for yourself. You might just be like Lord that eventually you might even lose everything. He lost everything in Sodom and Gomorrah. He even lost it. So I became a pillar of salt. But here Abraham said, let's not strike. Let's not fight. Let's not uh, quarrel about anything. Material things of the world, landed property or housing, or maybe it's a job, or it is this or that. Abraham said, we be brethren. There must be no strife. And then he says in verse 9, it's not the whole land before thee. So pray thyself. I pray thee for me. If thou wilt uh, go, if thou wilt take uh, the left hand, then I will go to the right. And if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lord lifted up his eyes. That's it. That's it. Those are the people, carnal people. Those are the people, unscriptural people. Those are the people, proud people. Those are the people, backsliding people. Those are the people, the people that put material things first. The people that put land and property first. The people that put money first. Money, money, money. More in the morning, money. In the afternoon, money. In the evening, no Bible study, money. Every time is money. That's what he put forth. And God is relegated to a far background in their lives. And they will be the losers for it. But look at this. And Lord lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan. That it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of, of the Lord, as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. And Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lord journeyed east and they separated themselves, the, the one from the other. And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. And Lord dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But... The men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. That was not important to Lord. All I want is land. All I want is, you know, I, I need some grass that my cattle will be able to have enough. And I need property. I need this and that. Whether the people are sinners or not, that's not my problem. I can live in their midst and then I will still be all right. No, you cannot be all right. Look at verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abraham, and after that, Lord was separated from him. Lift up now then, eyes, look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land which thou seest to thee, will I give it unto thy seed forever. You see that? The blessing came back to Abraham. And the Lord says, look unto Abraham. And as you look unto Abraham, and you do like he has done, I'll say, all that is not important to me. What's important to me is God first. And then it's righteousness. He says, it is that state of righteousness he will bless. It is that state of holiness he will bless. It is when you're pursuing that righteous life, he says that is what he will bless. I want you to look at this in uh, Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 3. Genesis chapter 20, reading from verse 3. The Lord will defend you. 
If you, you don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to, you know, put all this force and this force. My wife, my wife, my wife, my husband, my husband, my husband. You know, he's uh, going too much uh, for, you know, all this leadership. They have meeting on Monday. They have meeting on Tuesday. They have meeting Wednesday. They have meeting on Thursday. And fight my husband, my husband. How are we going to have a good marital life when my husband, my husband, hey, hey, hey. Don't uh, be very careful so that you don't lose that husband. That husband belongs to God. Let your husband serve the Lord this year. I said, let your husband serve the Lord this year. My wife, my wife, my wife, let your wife serve the Lord. And you'll be the happiest man in the universe in Jesus' name. Look at this now in uh, Genesis chapter 20, verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said unto him, Behold, Thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou was taken, you know, for she is a man's wife. What had happened here is this. In chapter 18 of Genesis, God promised Abraham and said, By this time next year, the child you're expecting will come. Laughter will come to your life. And I look at your face there. Where are you there? Laughter is coming. Joy is coming. That was chapter 18. And then they got to chapter 20. And because chapter 19 is talking about Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah being destroyed, chapter 20 now came. And Abimelech looked at the wife of uh, Abraham and said, Ah, this will be a good addition to my family. Come. And then took that uh, Sarah. And the promise of God was there that by this time next year, and before that next year came, ah, this is your year. I said, This is your year. Before that uh, promise came to fulfillment, Abimelech took uh, Sarah. And then Abraham did not begin to pray, Oh God, oh God, my wife, my wife, my wife. She just, we didn't even hear about it. He just kept quiet and God will defend the defenseless. And the one that cannot take a lawyer, the one that cannot go to court, and the one that they tell you, go, go there. Before you get there, we have seen all the judges. Don't go anywhere. Before they get there, God will get there before them. And so God came to uh, Abimelech and said, you are a dead man. If you don't release that woman, I'm going to kill you. Because that woman is a special woman. Your wife is a special woman. Your children are special. And your husband is special. God will protect everyone in Jesus' name. Look at verse 4. And Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? A righteous nation? A righteous nation? What are we talking about? Your priority, God. Your pursuit, righteousness. Righteousness. And then in verse 5, said he not to me, she is my sister, and she even she herself has said, he is my brother in the integrity of my heart and innocency of my heart. Have I done this? And God said unto him, in a dream, yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thine heart, and all I also withheld thee from, uh, from sinning against me, therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Look at verse 7. Now therefore, restore the man his wife. You've got your own, he has his own, restore the man his wife. I know about their marriage, restore the man, is what? That's the first woman in that man's house, restore the man, is what? You are having her to be a second or a third or tenth, don't do that. Restore the man, is what? That's restitution. And these are the paths to the blessing of the Lord. People have forgotten that we have to follow the paths of righteousness and the paths of repentance and the paths of restitution, righteousness, before we can have the blessing of the Lord. Look at verse 7. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live if thou restore her not. If thou dost not make this restitution, know that thou shalt surely die. You are listening to our pastor, Pastor W. F. Kumoye, or other anointed minister of God from our ministry. Let the words sink in your heart and they will do you good throughout your whole life. It is our belief by the grace of the Lord that you will come and worship with us at Deeper Life Bible Church. Number 4656 Bravo Drive, 
we have our service every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11.30. And we have our Bible study on every Monday from 7 to 8.30. As you are doing so, and the grace of the Lord will continue to be with you and you will never be the same. Thank you. God bless you.